Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. Afternoon, Beer Geeks, and welcome to Friday 5pm. How are we doing, Brad? Mate, I'm loving the fact that it's Friday. Um, And it's gorgeous weather outside. What a time to be alive. Yeah, I've, I'm going to be lighting the barbecue this oh. evening, bar- barbecuing some fish, making some potato salad, Oof. drinking, drinking. Well, I'll tell you what I'll be drinking. I'll be drinking uh, a delicious local lager from me. But what I wanted to drink is no longer sold in the UK. Duh, duh, duh. I, 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 <laughs> I don't want to scare you, but Beer Door, oh, Tesco's favourite, right. is no longer stocked. I say Tesco's favourite, the world's favourite lager oh, is now no longer stocked in Tesco. I wanted, we were just, it's so weird, we were just talking about uh, doing a t-shirt, a beer door themed t-shirt, well at least I was because I know it's one of your early favourite beers. That's mm-hmm. crazy, so now the t-shirt, out the window. Honestly, I was, I was like a lost child in a supermarket just wandering up and down aisles going, what? Where's the beer door? Oh, um, and and apparently it is no longer sold in Tesco. Apparently it might still be available online, but I think that's just like they're running through the last of the stock. Wow. It it's heartbreaks. People that don't know what beer door is, it's a horrible beer. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's a four percent shitty lager. But it was what it was the first beer I ever had was a beer door, like age fourteen. Um, and it's what I drank at barbecues with my friends. It's what you know me and my dad used to drink when I was just getting into beer. It was, you know, when my dad came home, like my memory as a kid is is my dad coming home, coming through the door, cracking a beer door and then reheating his dinner. Like just whenever I hear a bottle fizz, I still sort of see my dad finally winding down after a long day. It's it's a really precious beer to me. And the fact that I can't get it is kind of heartbreaking. And, and we used to have barbecues with my friends, like I say, and I drink that lager with them mm. and I wanted to have it with my barbecue and I can't. Mate, I feel for you. I'd, I'd give you a hug if if you were here right now. Uh, that's uh, that's a it would big be good, but it wouldn't your, be uh, your history. Wouldn't be door. No. Yeah, I don't know whether it's still going to be made. So it, it's made by a brewery called Brasserie uh, de Saint Omer um, over in France, not not far from from the north coast. Um, and I think it was like a white label, like just made for for Tesco. So I don't know whether it will ever be made again or whether that same recipe is is has like 50 different names all over Europe. Right. Um, but I'm thinking we need to do a Craft Beer Channel video to go get Johnny some beer door <laughs> as soon as we're allowed to leave the country. I like it. It sounds, sounds crucial for the Craft Beer Channel to uh, <laughs> go and find a, a mass uh, <laughs> macro beer. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. I think, I think they make some interesting like Belgian styles as well. Like the brewery itself, it's... I've, I've I've been googling as you can tell because I've been desperately trying to find beer door on the internet. Um, they they make two million hectoliters a year, some of which is you know Belgian style stuff. Um, so it's a brewery that makes lots of different things. But, but yeah, unlike most craft beer channel videos, we wouldn't care about that. We'd just be there for the, the crap four percent lager. As long um, as we can have, uh, I want to be a door. Uh, the Stone <laughs> Roses, I want to be adored song playing in the background of the video um, and us, you know, football hooligan style chanting, I want to be a door, uh, then I'm, I'm totally up for it, mate. Let's do it. 
Okay, well, you approached the Stone Roses for the licensing. Oh, Ian Brown's a lovely chap. I reckon he'll he'll uh, extend his his arms wide open. He'll appreciate the pun. Oh, big time, big time. <laughs> Do you think we can can we buy the beer door name and start making? Can we make our own beer door? I don't know. I don't know who owns it. We'll have to see we'll whether it's Tesco. Or, or Saint Om- Saint Omer. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a great name for a beer. It's a beer, beer of gold, right? Gold yeah, beer. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we could start producing session lager under the the, the phrase beer door and, and bring back the barbecue tradition to the dozens of families that actually have that <laughs> tradition. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I tweeted about it. It's got forty two likes, five retweets, and eight replies, wow. which is more than most of our content gets. So Jesus. clearly other people care. And we've got, you know, great breweries. We've, we're Howling Hops are upset by it. Lots of our followers are upset by it. Um, and interestingly, quite a lot of Craft Beer Channel fans also sort of weaned on uh, on Beer Door. Do you think we um, need to start a social media campaign to pressure Tesco bring to bring back the door? Back? Yeah. Yeah. Like, don't Open clo- the door. Don't close pre- the door. Don't close the door. There it is. Hey. There it is. There's the campaign. Don't close the door. Yeah. So I hang on. Door, legs. Beard the ore means golden beer. So does that mean carp yeah, beer door ice cream means like golden carp? Some, something of gold. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Door. I thought door. I'm going like to Google that. Translation. Oh, now I'm, I was about to. I was about to just tweet the word t- translation. Uh, cut. Door meaning menu of gold. Oh yeah, of course, like a la carte. How, what? Oh, I can't believe I've had to Google that and not made uh, that link. So hang on, the ice cream means menu of of gold. Menu of gold. What the fuck? That's a weird thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the ice cream's absolute fucking trash, right? It if you had horrible. it recently. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it's like foamy. I hate all that foamy cheap ice cream. If I buy yeah, ice cream, I mean I, I love ice cream. If I have to buy ice cream, um, not from a gelato man, then I I will only get this sounds well poncy, but I I just you know, Hagen does or something of that level. I mean to my taste buds, even Ben and Jerry's is is a little bit trash. But um What? Yeah, compared to the the one compared to Hagen does. Compared to the Hagen does, I love I love the Hagen does. I think it's superior. I, I, I assure you, Hagen does is no more superior to Ben and Jerry's. I feel like it's less foamy. Like if you if you let both of them melt, um, this is my hallmark of a good ice cream. Hagen does will just go to almost like a milk, like a liquid. Whereas if you let another inferior ice cream melt, it goes to a foam. Like an artificial, like a margarine type foam, because there's some sort of weird emulsifier or something in there, and I don't like it, Johnny. I don't appreciate it. It, it doesn't deserve to be in my my ice cream that I'm shoveling. I've got I've got several questions off the back of that. Yes, go on. Uh, the first one is why are you letting your ice cream melt? I thought you liked ice cream. I mean, I don't I don't try and let my ice cream melt. It's an observation I've made. When when I, I haven't been able to eat the ice cream quick enough when it's incredibly hot, uh, and I've noted <laughs> that the the structure of the ice cream particles is foamy and fake, um, rather than milky and just sort well, of. Well, I I I I, th- I mean I'm not arguing with with most cheap ice cream, but I do mm. think the Ben and Jerry's being a Vermont all milk product. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did is, you just do probably that? quality? I know it's from no. Vermont, but you just... Okay, you knew it was all milk. Okay. Yeah. I watched... I mean, don't get me wrong. I enjoy it a lot. And I enjoy it more because I watched this thing about Ben and Jerry's. And one of them, I can't remember if it's Ben or Jerry, has no taste. He can't taste anything. So when they started the... Or he's got very, very poor taste, uh, taste bug-wise. When they started the uh, the brand, um, they put about five times the amount of flavour... Um, as every other ice cream brand on the market, just so he could taste it, um, and that was that was what they became known for. Almost like so much flavour compared to anyone else. Um, there's so, there's so many brands that have that story though. Yeah, I feel like it might be a bit of a 
I watched the documentary, maybe. A bit of a, a, a marketing cliche. Maybe. Oh, I know what it was. They, bring they, out. they were on, um, I'm pretty sure they were on a Jeff Goldblum thing, which is on Disney Plus, which my sister has, and I've been piggybacking. Um, and it's called, like, Jeff Goldblum Explains the World or something. And he looks at different things he's interested in. One of them is ice cream. So he goes on, like, a whole mission to s- discover interesting stuff about ice cream. Well, there you go. I hope it. I hope it's true. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes we made in our documentary was to not go to the Ben and Jerry's factory while we were mm, over there. I, uh, I regret that every time I think about it. Oh. Um, anyway, how did we get onto ice cream? Um, door, cart door, door, Beer cart door. door. There we go. Right. So that was quite a departure, <laughs> as usual. I've been listening to. So when I another thing I grew up on, other than beer door, was uh, Scrubs. Yeah, and Scrubs is celebrating twenty years since it was first aired, and uh, Donald Faison and Zach Braff are doing a podcast nice. where they rewatch all the shows and they get the guests on. Um, and I've basically realised because ours is basically a watch along show as well. Um, watch along shows are not actually about the shows. That's what I've learned because theirs is exactly the same. Mostly they talk about Star Wars. Awesome. Okay. Um, I'm, and I'm, mostly I'm we talk you. about ice cream or marshmallow. Yes, yes. Which commonly go together in Ben and Jerry's world as well. Mm. So uh, maybe we should have started the the cart (laughs) beer, the cart beer door channel. Oh, now you're talking. Oh, nearly, nearly. Now you're talking. Um, Anywho, so yes, that was my week. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Trying to find beer door and failing. But at least we're going to get some content out of it when we drive over there. I'll tell Um, you, mate, the, the highlight of my week was us getting together. We were able to get back together again now. We we filmed about three videos this week, I think. Um, we did. And we met up for another sort of exciting project as well. But um, yes, mate, well, it was great to be back in the same room recording content again. Brilliant stuff. It was it was magical. It felt like, it almost felt like we'd never been away. Exactly. Um, and we picked a, a controversial topic to talk about that has set the comments alight. Mm. Um what um I mean t- tell me about uh, your love of West Coast IPA before we get into the video. Well, I would say that along with Brooklyn um were my you know so drinking Sierra Nevada and a little bit later Racer 5 and a fair bit later Lagunitas were kind of my my first experiences in love of proper craft beer. Um, you know, before that I was, I would have been drinking, I don't know. Well, I, I drank a lot of Czech pills actually in the pub. You know, I'd be ordering a, a Pilsner, a Kel. Well, actually, we didn't really see that much in the pubs I was frequenting. It was more like Star of Praman, which would give me a bang. Yeah, hangover. Star was, I remember that having a real, mm, a real moment, maybe real moment, 15 yeah. years ago. So yeah, so it would have been about 15 years ago. It would have been, yeah, maybe a little bit longer for me. I'm a little bit older. But I would have been out, you know, as an art student drinking out for free when I could at art things. But if I had to pay, I'd be drinking a, a pint of Star. And then suddenly I uh, got a job and, you know, a little bit of money, a little bit of pontiness, a little bit of more discerning nature. And the, these things called West Coast IP, well, just IPAs at that point came along. Yeah, like American IPAs, is what mm. they were called, yeah. And I think that's what it was. It was like America as well. And, you know, where I, you know... I'd always hated like Budweiser and, and shit like that. It had never appealed to me. Um, apart from the branding, beautiful branding. Um, you know, when these things came out, I was like, wow, this is a flavor sensation. I, I don't even know what to make of it, but I knew I liked it. Um, so for me, West Coast was was the entry into the club. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for, for me too. But what, what was kind of interesting, and I remember the videos that we made around the time that these New England IPAs were coming out, which would have been 2015, 2016. Um, and we, we brewed the, the second one ever made in the UK with, uh, with Gypsy Hill. And I remember in that video saying, like, these beers are much more sessionable because they're less bitter. And looking back on it, that was fucking nonsense, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, because actually, because they're sweeter, they're significantly less se- sessionable, mm. and I really miss the the you know the brazenly bitter West Coast that left you gasping for more. And since I've got back into West Coast beers, because all our palates go in a circle anyway, and we're craving something new all the time, um, 
I've recently gone on a West Coast kick, and I'm I feel like I drink a lot faster when I'm drinking West Coast IPA. Yeah, there's something very satisfying about them, um, and they're not sweet and chlorine or anything. They're just sort of bang, wham, bam. Thank you. That's yeah. Flavor explosion. Uh, one another sip. Yep, yep. Now I've drunk a pint. Oh, now I'm a bit drunk. <laughs> Give me another, another one. one. Beer monsters out now. Oh, keep going. But um, I remember when we were in uh, when we were in Pennsylvania, mm. um, and we'd been driving around uh, Harrisburg where we were were staying because we were doing a talk at university, and we we'd gone to lots of different breweries and we were getting all these tips from all these beer geeks. And we were looking for somewhere one night and we'd kind of been to everywhere that was close to drive. And there was Appalachian Brewery, mm. which was like one of the bigger ones. I think it's owned possibly by CBA, which has just been bought by AB InBev, but was Kona, Red Hook uh, and Widmer, that big uh, collective. Um, and we were sort of warned off it. They were like, yeah, the beer's fine. And we walked in like for dinner at one of their brew pubs and having had endless New England IPA, lots of sours and stuff... And we ordered their West Coast IPA. We're like, ah, it's almost the best beer of the trip, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> like, it's definitely perceived as dull, I think, the West mm. Coast IPA, particularly within, like, not not within the bubble bubble, because the bubble bubble loves everything. But, like, that little beer geek community of a couple of million people in America, I think they've definitely gone off West Coast. Um, and they were warning us off it. And it was the best... Yeah, it's like one of the most memorable beer experiences I had in Pennsylvania, which is really bad because they're not an independent brewery, but mm. just bitterness, caramel, grapefruit, pine. It's just a wonderful flavour combination. Was that we, we had, was that in Gettysburg when we had burgers? Did I did you have burgers? I think I had a burger. Yeah, it's like a, it was quite a big, flashy place. Yeah. Uh, I think it was in Gettysburg. I think you're right. Mm. Um, nice. It was towards the end of the trip, and you, you know, I know obviously in our videos we're always super excited. We're seeing all these amazing things, and it's a like an absurd privilege that we get to do this as part of our career. But by the end of the trips, you are beer jaded by the oh, end. Big time, big time. <laughs> I mean, I was certainly burger jaded by that point, but uh, yeah, and that takes a lot. Oof. Yeah, big time. Yeah, but it was. Um, uh, it was great. It was great. It was a great trip. Trogues was amazing. Um, Oh, true. I mean, the best West Coast IPA actually we had while we were out there was was their one, um, Perpetual. Um, it's a really fucking good West Coast IPA, and that brewery, all the stuff that we had in the tap room was amazing as well. Like all these experimental, open fermented pilsners and wild ales and stuff. They're one of those breweries that just do not get the attention that they deserve. They're they're world class. They really are. Yeah, they were super awesome. Uh, check out the video, guys, if you haven't already. Um, yes I'll put that in the show notes because that was a great video there's some great sort of uh, technique stuff in there about how to choose uh, hops and, and and how to sort of smell them and grade them and stuff with um, your main man I can't remember his name but he was a bit of a sort of uh, a, g- a genius beer kind of quiet man wasn't he I, I don't know how to describe him but he, yeah. uh, he was um I don't know, somewhere between Rain Man, mm. like one of those people where they could just, you know, if you spill a load of beans, they can count it instantly. But like yeah. he was just sniffing hops and instantly going, that's that variety, that's that variety, that's that variety. And he's just like, oh God, I just couldn't believe what I was sort of seeing because he was accurate every time. And, and yeah, yeah, he was giving us a masterclass in picking hops, which we are actually going to be using uh, in a great video we've got coming out in probably about a month and a half time. I can't tell you what it is yet because it's partly sponsored and we need to finalise that deal. But uh, I've spent today designing uh, a recipe for a brewing video we're going to be doing, mm-hmm. um, which I haven't told Brad the recipe yet, so I've, I'm also keeping him in the dark too. So I don't feel alone, dear no. listeners. No, I'm off to the um, Should we, <laughs> <laughs> should we, uh, should we have a look at the comments? Yeah, go on then. Um, so, I mean, this whole video that we did, which was what is New England IPA, which was kind of a slight misnomer, but we put it there because we thought that that would get the right people clicking, uh, in which we tried to explain the difference between New England IPA and West Coast IPA. Um, and it was inspired by, by a tweet from a, 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 a bar staff person who um, basically had to explain what West Coast was to somebody after they said it was an IPA when they tried it. Um an interesting comment from a guy called Michael Warren, who I got into a, a conversation with. Um, he said, there shouldn't be any caramel in a West Coast IPA. It should be a very dry malt character. 
any crystal camera mold should be very restrained. And I was like, nah. <laughs> I didn't really know what to say. I was like, Blind Pig, Racer 5, Stone, Lagunitas, like, they are all crystal heavy beers. Yeah, I always think caramelly. When I, when yeah, I it, it, it's one of the defining flavours. It's it's having huge bitterness and savoury aroma balanced by the sweet caramel vibes. And I think, you know, in modern times, the last 10 years, that amount of crystal or caramel flavours has has disappeared a little bit as we want our beers blonder and blonder. But those classics are all, you know, the malt bill is caramel tinged, heavily caramel tinged. Um, so I think maybe people have, have um, forgotten even what true West Coasters were like. Um, we actually, we got a message from Shane Swindles, uh, the wonderful singing uh, founder of uh, the Cheshire Brew House, which is one of the beers that we featured, yeah. saying he doesn't actually put caramel in, he uses Munich. Oh. Uh, rather than caramel, he took exception to us besmirching his beer. Um, so Munich malt is is a, a slightly darker kind of um, Pilsner malt that's used in a lot of uh, Bavarian lagers. That's cool. So it's a little bit less kind of um, caramel and a little bit more kind of rich biscuit, rich tea kind of flavours. So it's just a little bit of sweet complexity. Can Can um, I ask Johnny what kind of message he sent? Did he Did he do you a singing telegram message? Oh, if he'd sung it, I'd have, I'd have, we'd be playing that right now <laughs> on the podcast. Um, sadly, no, it was just a, just a Twitter message saying thanks for the video and, and just clarifying. Nice. Um, he also said that in his West, o- West Coast IPAs, he uses his British ale yeast. Right. Um, and just, just um, adjust everything else around that yeast. So in the West a bit Coast, mold, very different water chemistry. Sorry? Right. In the West Coast, he's doing that. Yeah, so he's just using it right across the board, nice. which I think because that smell was slightly sweet. There was a tiny bit of stone fruit, and you mentioned it, and I didn't. Mm. So you clearly picked up that yeast, and I was I was just blinded and excited by the fact I was transported to a pine forest. Yeah, that's that's cool that he's using that that particular yeast. That isn't the norm, right? That's quite strange to be doing that, or um, uh, not strange, but it's it's not like the sort of standard one you would use, is it? No, I mean most breweries would buy um, buy a different yeast for all the beers that they make, and and mm. some breweries decide actually maybe we'd rather um, have yeast. that little sort of thread between yeah between all of our beers and have a house yeast. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think he said he uses that British ale yeast, his house yeast, in uh, pretty much everything, um, every single beer that he makes, and he only puts crystal in two beers, both of which are traditional English beers. So there you go. Go figure. I mean, uh, you can claim you know everything on YouTube, and most people do, but it's not always true, even in our case, Brad. I know. Well, it's certainly true in my case, for sure, but I, I put a lot of <laughs> stock in what you say, Johnny. So, uh, that's, And that's I'm cool. leading you down, down the garden path. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was this week's video. That will be in the show notes. If you haven't watched it, um, it is even though I say so myself, an entirely flawed but very entertaining uh, uh, deep dive into the difference between the two, you know, the two leading styles of craft beer. Um, you know, those are the, you know, IPA. Whenever any ask, anyone asks me what the next big trend's going to be, I'm like, IPA, it's the next big trend. It was <laughs> last year's, it will be this year's. <laughs> They're so different as well. It's kind of amazing that, you know, what can we, can we invent an IPA, Johnny, that's from, you know, not East Coast or West Coast. What other, what what kind of? Well, so what can this we is do? the other thing. Actually, on Twitter, when we when we shared it on Twitter, we got a question going. What do you think of Mountain IPA? And I had to Google it. I was like, What the fuck is Mountain, Mountain IPA? IPA. Right. And as far as I can see, it was Odell's Brewery, oh, okay. who are in Colorado, trying to make their own name. Ah, of beer. I see marketing stuff, um, and they gave an explanation that was absolute fucking nonsense. Right. It was saying New England IPA uses lactose and adjuncts and is very sweet. Mountain IPA is uh, not very bitter and it's juicy and it's hazy. And then West Coast is, you know, as we described, caramel pine forest. And I was like, no, what you've done is, is you've just got New England IPA. <laughs> What you really want to drink is ours, which, and then they give the explanation of what Mountain IPA is using the definition of New England of New IPA. England, right. 
Um, but I think it's come to mean like something a little bit in between the coasts. So a little bit lighter and fresher than uh, than a New England. Um, and uh, a little bit more bitter, but not as bitter as a West Coast and not necessarily using any sort of complex malt bills to get a bit more malt depth. Mm. So it's a lighter, fresher New England is a mountain IPA. So we need to find something like, well, English IPA is already taken. Catford IPA? I don't know. I, yeah, I was just thinking. IPA. What? What? I, I, you know, what other flavor profiles could we could we put into an IPA to make it totally different from the other two? Because yeah, you know, uh, New England and a West Coast are like massively different profiles, but obviously still IPAs. So, as far as I'm concerned, the field is open for any kind <laughs> of wacky, you know, other sort of rhomboid, you know, points on a bloody triangle. I don't know why I just said rhomboid, but anyway. Um, I mean, basically, that's what craft beer has done. If you really want something mm. to sell, you just slap IPA on it. So, you you know, mm. there are these sour beers that are highly hopped and they're called sour IPAs. You're like, I mean, they're not. <laughs> they're, they're not They're not IPAs, are mm. they? They're just highly hopped sours or Brett IPA, Belgian IPA, all these things. Like, They're not IPAs. You've just hopped them lots. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we could do that. We could just pick a style slap IPA on it and put some American hops in and see if we can make our millions, Brad. Boom. There's a, there's Boom. a deal right there. It's what we've been doing wrong for 30 odd years of our life. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. So uh, we're already at 25 minutes, Brad. This was, Ooh, this was bumper episode. very waffly. So before we go, we've got two quick announcements. The first and most important is that a week today, uh, we are doing another live show, this time really excitingly with Wild Beer Co. Well, hey, mate, can't wait. Yeah, they are an amazing brewery, and we did a video with them, two videos with them relatively recently. Uh, the last one was all about their spontaneous beer, which was absolutely stellar. Easily the best uh, Gers inspired beer I've had uh, from a UK brewery. Mm. Um, so we're very excited to uh, be doing a live show with their head brewer, Brett. Um, and we put together a case with them uh, of delicious, uh, sour, and exciting, uh, and often heavily fruited beers. So if that's your thing, uh, a link to the box and to the live show is in the show notes. Um, obviously, if you buy a box from them, we get a little kickback as well, so you're supporting the channel. So much love to the many people who have already brought, bought one. We've had lots of tweets. Um, and do uh, do pick one up if you fancy joining us next Friday. Can I just know what a perfect name uh, Brett has for a man that makes sour beers and... Uh... Wow, beers. Brett. His name's Brett. It's weird. There's quite a few Brett brewers. Brewers yeah. called Brett in the world. I think the, the original head brewer of Goose Island might have been called Brett. Um, I think... No. Oh, who was it? Uh, Brett. His name is Brett Porter. No. Which is just too on. good to be true. Get yeah. out of town. Yeah. I wouldn't lie to you about something that serious. That man's destined um, for, for greatness. Absolutely. Or alcoholism. Which, um, <laughs> in our case, is the same thing. So the other exciting announcement is that we are teaming up with We Are Beer, which is the team behind London Craft Beer Festival, Edinburgh Craft Beer Festival, Bristol Craft Beer Festival, and Beer Central, which is the Birmingham Craft Beer Festival, um, to host a replacement for the London Craft Beer Festival, which was supposed to be happening in August. That's obviously been pushed back. So we are hatching plans for a slightly longer live stream with lots of guests, lots of pre-recorded segments, lots of uh, cooking, maybe some brewing, all kinds of exciting stuff. And we've just sorted a venue, um, and that is... It's almost signed off, isn't it, Brad? We can talk about it, right? Yeah. Can we talk about the venue, or do we want to keep that a top-secret thing? We can say uh, it's in South London. It's, it's in South it's London. in Brad's homeland. Um, I may have lived in that particular part of London for about six or seven years, for anyone that knows me. Uh, <laughs> We're going to have the real the real stalkers <laughs> turning up to this one if we leave it there. Yeah, um, Yeah. so we, we found a cool venue which we'll be announcing uh, in due course, and we'll be announcing everyone that's going to be appearing on that. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get a box together or something so that you, can guy, you guys can drink alo- along at home. But you might also be able to join us. We're still working out the legal implications of, of maybe having a little audience, so we'll mm. let you know about that. But the thing you need to know is keep August 8th, that's a Saturday, free from late afternoon to evening. That's when the live show will be, and I promise you it's going to be well worth a couple of hours of your time uh, to, to relax, like we used to, used to do with the old wireless um, and a couple of beers. Hell yeah. 
So that's it from this week's uh, Friday 5pm. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. There is no video next week because I'm on my holly bobs. Um, not going anywhere, but taking a break. Uh, but we will be back uh, a week today for that Wild Beer Co. show. So have a great week, guys. See ya. The Bubble Podcast is brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer Channel. Head to youtube.com slash the Craft Beer Channel to watch this week's video and over 400 more exciting episodes. If you love what we do, please, please, please do subscribe and even join our Patreon at patreon.com slash craft beer channel. Love and beer. <laughs>